Hello, and welcome to the first installment of a three-part series of videos from G Sharp Jams. In these videos, I will show you everything you need to know to build a successful home recording studio, choose the right equipment, and start making money with your music. This first video was intended for those just starting out. Maybe all you have right now is a computer and a few musical ideas, but no other equipment yet. Or, maybe you already have purchased some VSTs and a keyboard and are just looking for some direction on getting started. If this is you, then this first video is for you. If you are already up and running with your studio, honestly, you may still pick up a few good pointers from this video, so stick around. Let me tell you first what this video will and will not cover. First, what we won't cover. There are tons of videos already on YouTube that give you demonstrations of all the different software and computer-based music production tools, better known as VSTs, or Virtual Studio Technology. And we'll come back to this term a little bit later. So, I will not walk you through demonstrations of the different VSTs in the market right now. That's for another video. Instead, I will walk you through how to make the best decisions in your purchases of these VSTs, and I will show you what is currently out there for you. But again, if you're looking for another video showing you all the different sounds and articulations a particular VST has, you might want to buy or take a look at another video. That's just me being honest and keeping it straight to the point. Also, this video is not another top 10 list of the best VSTs to buy right now or the best door or digital audio workstation. And again, we'll come back to this term a little bit later. But what I will show you is how they fit into your studio how to choose one that's best for your needs and for your goals. So in short, this first video was designed to do one thing. Take the beginner and show them how to use their time, money, and efforts wisely, and hopefully save you from the pitfalls and mistakes that most beginning home studio owners make. What you won't see here is another musician screaming at you to buy the top and the latest and the greatest piece of equipment and showing off their playing skills. Too much of that already on YouTube. Okay, all that being said, let's get started. But first, take a quick second to pause this video and click the subscribe button at the bottom of this screen. This helps me to stay on YouTube and continue to bring you more videos. So now, Grab a pen and paper and get ready to take some notes. Okay, so you're back. Let's jump in and start talking about building your studio and how to make your first Grammy Award winning record. You have your budget set and you're ready to pay a visit to your neighborhood music shop and buy all the latest and greatest equipment that's going to make you sound like a pro, right? Wrong. Slow down. Before you start spending money on equipment, take the time to figure out what you will need first. There are plenty of salesmen out there willing to sell you everything they have in their store to you if you come across as someone who hasn't done their research first. So, first decide what you need. Obviously, a computer. Your computer is going to be the centralized location of all your work. It's going to be the place that stores all your music, your VST, your door, your audio interface, speakers, and everything else that runs your studio. So, making the right choice of what computer to buy is essential. First thing I would strongly suggest is considering getting two monitors for your computer. When making music with a door and VST, one monitor just doesn't cut it. The screen will get too cluttered and it makes it very difficult to get any work done. One monitor should have your door and the other your VST. This way you can see what's going on and have access to both. Speaking of monitors, 
I would also strongly suggest getting monitors that are at least 22 inches in size. This is the bare bin minimum and the larger the better. You're going to be spending a lot of time looking at those screens and you don't want to strain your eyes looking at small monitors. As you will see as we move forward, there will be a lot to look at on your screen, some of it in very fine detail, especially when working with your door. So, buying bigger monitors than the standard 17 inches is definitely recommended. The next consideration when buying a computer is hard drive space. When buying a computer, a hard drive space is going to be essential. You're going to use a lot of hard drive space downloading all of your VSTs and your door. And again, other equipment. So VSTs, some, only take up 20 to 30 megabytes of space, while some take up over 200 gigabytes especially some of the best symphony orchestra VSTs. For instance, here is one of the VSTs I use, and the space it takes up on my hard drive, as you can see, is pretty large. As you can see again, it's taking up a lot of space, and this is only one VST. I can assure you that in time, you will have many VSTs in your arsenal. I currently have about 30, so buying a computer with a hard a huge hard drive is essential. I would recommend starting out with at least one terabyte of space or purchase an external hard drive to add to your existing computer that you will give you more gigs of space. Another consideration is RAM. Most computers today come with about 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. While 8 gigabytes of RAM may suffice for a while, you will definitely wish you had at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in your computer or more. I currently work with some very intensive VSTs that put your computer's CPU to work and chew up a lot of RAM. But I'm getting by with only 16 gigabytes of RAM because my computer's processor is fast and powerful. Here are the specs of my computer. And again, I do just fine with this and have never had a memory or computer speed problem with this system setup. Next, a keyboard. You will need a keyboard or MIDI controller in order to play your VSTs. This MIDI controller comes in all different sizes with different features. This particular MIDI controller includes a keyboard, drum pads, mod wheel, and other buttons and knobs to help you control all of your work from one central piece of equipment. MIDI controllers like this one are a good place to start with your new studio. Again, I won't be giving you a demo of the MIDI controllers that are out there, but I'm going to show you what you will need. They run anywhere from about 60 bucks up to $2,000, but this particular model gets the job done for less than 300 You'll notice that there are not as many keys on this keyboard as you might find on your concert grand piano. But there are other models available that give you a full 88 keys if that's what you're used to using. Take a look at some of the videos here on YouTube for a comparison of the models available. Those two pieces of equipment are going to be your central starting point in building your studio. Without them, you have nothing to build upon. So now that you have the basics to get started, it's time to look at VSTs, doors, sequencers, microphones, and other equipment you will use to build your studio. This is where the fun begins. I'm sure you have already spent hours sitting in front of your computer, researching and looking at video demos of dozens of VSTs, the amount of choices can be overwhelming, and if you're like I was in the beginning, you're about ready to go out and buy the latest and greatest that's getting all the great reviews on the internet, but stop right there. Write this down in big bold letters and keep it in front of your computer screen starting today and never remove it. 
it's one of the biggest mistakes new studio owners make and even more experienced studio owners still make. Write this down. It's not the equipment that makes great music. It's the talent of the musician that creates great music. In other words, spending thousands of dollars on a MIDI controller and $2,000 on a Gibson Les Paul guitar doesn't make you a great musician. Practice and an understanding of how to use your equipment is what leads to great sounding music. Here's an example. You're 18 years old and you just got your driver's license yesterday. Your rich daddy is going to take you out and buy you a new car. Do you really think he's going to buy you the Lamborghini or Ferrari from the dealership? You need years of driving experience behind the wheel of a car first before you can plunk down $200,000 for a Ferrari or Lamborghini. Having a driver's license doesn't qualify you to drive in next year's Indy 500. That being said, let's take a look at some of the equipment I use. First, the door, or D-A-W. This is Reaper which cost about $70 at the time of the making of this video. There are many other doors that you can use that will cost up to $1,000 and more, but this one does everything I need. Take a moment and pause the video. Go to my website, www.gsharpjams.com, and listen to some of the music I have made with this door. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the site for updates on new releases. I promise I won't spam your email. Also, remember to support your independent artists. This is one of my income streams and your purchases help. So, take a moment, pause the video, and check out my website. Okay, so welcome back. Getting back to Reaper, Reaper is a great DAW for making music and comes with everything you will need to get up and running. The music you heard on my website was all created using Reaper along with the VSTs I have installed on my computer. With Reaper, you can record your music, save it, render it so that it can be distributed to the internet or to music distribution companies such as CD Baby, TuneCore, DistroKid, and many others. I love my Reaper DAW. I have also used Personis Studio One, but Reaper is the one I stick with. Not saying there is anything wrong with Studio One, I just prefer Reaper. Next is your VST or VSTs that you will choose. The choices here are overwhelming, so it's important to first decide what style or genre of music you will be making. I play a lot of jazz mixed in with some orchestral instrument sounds. I use three main products. One being East West Sounds Online Composer Cloud, which is a monthly or annual subscription service with a library of over 40,000 instruments. I also like Native Instruments Contact and Heaviosity. I also use Ample Bass for my bass guitar, and I also use Easy Keys for my piano and keyboard parts. Installing these onto your computer is fairly easy, and integrating them with Reaper is a snap. Honestly, between Contact and East-West, you have all the different sounds and it's instruments that you're going to need. So. To get started, I would suggest taking a look at these first. I'd just like to add additional VSTs like Easy Keys to give me more choices for my piano sounds and phrases. If you're not a piano player like myself, I play the guitar and have very little piano playing skills, then Easy Keys comes with piano phrases that you can use within your music covering multiple styles from rock to pop and jazz which you can edit and then use the phrases to your liking. There are many other choices available to you, 
but for simplicity's sake and the fact that I couldn't possibly name all of them here. I'm giving you these choices to begin with. I encourage you to visit their websites for more information. And by the way, I am not a paid spokesman for any of these products. These are just my suggestions based upon what I use. Next, you're going to need to consider the use of a microphone, audio interface, and speakers. Again, there are many choices available in the market, but do you really need a $1,000 microphone to get started or $5,000 speakers? Basically, I just use Audio-Technica AT202 microphones, Behringer MS40 speakers, and the Personas Audio Box USB 96 as my audio interface. The three all together cost me about five, maybe six hundred dollars, and they work just fine. Your audio interface is what you will use to plug in your microphone, speakers, and MIDI controller to your computer. You can't plug these things directly into your computer, so you're going to need an interface, hence the word interface. Everything gets plugged into the interface and then a single cord gets plugged into your computer. This turns your computer into your home studio. The need for a microphone and speakers is obvious, so I won't go into detail about them other than to say, obviously, you're going to need them. Also, don't think you can use headphones to listen to your music while you create it. Most headphones have color added to them, so what you hear through your headphones is not a good representation of what is actually being recorded. Use speakers for the most accurate monitoring of your recording. Next, consider a good piece of furniture and a comfortable chair to sit in while you are working. A simple desk dedicated to holding your computer, keyboard, speakers, and audio interface should do the, the trick. You will also be spending hours in front of your computer, so buy a good, comfortable chair that swivels and has a height adjustment as well. You will be thankful that you remember to get a chair that swivels and has that height adjustment. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. And finally, the next thing that you want to make sure of is that you have a good, clean, spacious room for your studio. You're getting ready to put down a lot of money in building your studio. So do you really want all of that equipment that you just spent your hard earned money on sitting in a dingy, damp basement full of cobwebs and old pizza boxes? Find a space in your home where you can spread out, organize and feel comfortable. You will be spending hours in this space. Damp air can destroy your equipment. So if you're thinking of using your basement, make sure the windows are sealed properly and there's no excessive heat, cold, or moisture coming into the room that can damage your equipment. All told, I have spent less than $6,000 on my home studio, as you heard from the music on my website and Spotify. The results have been great. I didn't go out and buy the most expensive equipment. It's just not needed. And I didn't break my bank account by buying every VST that's out there just because the internet says it's the latest and greatest thing since grandma's apple pie. Start out simple. You will realize what additions you need as you go. But start with the basics. The more experience you gain in recording, the more you will realize what equipment you need to add and what equipment you may never need. I hope all of this has helped you, and I invite you to join me on part two of this video series, which will be out soon. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel below, and also take a look at my website www.gsharpjams.com for more information about me and my music. My music is also available on Spotify, Tidal, iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Play, and most other streaming services. Thanks again for spending some time with me. G Sharp Jams, out till next time.